All right, it's Python on hardware time, Lady Ada. Okay, blinka, 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 blinka me up. Yeah, it's Python on hardware, and as usual, we're gonna go over the newsletter, then gonna then have a discussion about things. A little talk, a little chit chat. Um, this week, CircuitPython 7.0 beta released. We're in a beta. All right, so some of the big things since the 6.3.0. Support for CircuitPython development workflow over BLE. Camera support on ESP32 S2. Curio, QR decoding. Um, keypad scanning module. Real-time customization of USB devices. That one's new. Merging in of the MicroPython fixes and enhancements of MicroPython as of 1.16. The great merge. Hence, the poster. Two Blinkas. Two snakes. One Blinka. Yeah, I don't think the uh, orange snake has a name. And they don't use that anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, The nameless snake. But uh, Blink has a name. Um, next up. Uh, simplification for the RGB status and LED codes. Um, anything else? Like Unicode file name support, I think is a good one. Like, I think that's still being worked on. And it depends. But yeah, a couple modules. But yeah, there's big, a lot. big things are camera support, uh, BLE one-time keypad, uh, one-time USB, and um, updating MicroPython. The rest is a little bit kind of behind-the-scenes stuff. Oh. Yeah, Jeffler was asking, is it pronounced Curio? So Curio... Um, I did a blog post about, uh, I worked on these Sony robots a million years ago, and then we decided to do a product because Sony abandoned everything, and Curio um, was a specific word that I always wanted to use even before Sony, and uh, I think that's how it's pronounced, Curio. Curio. Q-R-I-O? Yeah, Q-R-I-O. Okay. Or Q-R-I-O. That's what I, well, this isn't, this isn't related, it's not related to the robot. This is a no, Q-R-I-O. It's the same. Yeah. But if folks want to see non-Boston Dynamics uh, robots doing stuff, Check out, um, just do a search on our blog and look for Curio. They were dancing robots. They'd read stories of kids. And uh, I tried to smuggle one of them out, but Sony stopped me. Um, anyways, so you can look at the rest of the newsletter. More stuff on Whippersnapper. That's our beta. If you want to participate, you can do it on Discord. Um, we have a little bit of a recap of the latest Hackspace magazine. Mm -hmm. So make music with Pico and CircuitPython. Um, there is a bunch of stuff going on in the world of keyboards and CircuitPython because that's one of the things it does. Um, a lot of people are doing things like make a 3D printed, uh, like Jepler did from Show and Tell, 3D printed keyboards. Keycaps, yeah. Keycaps, you name it, because now we have a micro pad. Um, so that is the news in the newsletter. Do you subscribe? We're getting really close to 9,000 subscribers. Oh. Um, so if uh, like 10 of you subscribe, um, we'll probably hit it next week. Um, more keyboards. Here's the NumPad 4000 mechanical key switch data entry yeah, device. Yeah, new guide. That was by John Park. Um, but the topic of the week, and I think this is maybe some of the biggest news, but there is no such thing as independent press in electronics anymore. So no one's really going to write about stuff because everyone's owned by someone else. So we try to cover the things that we think are interesting. So Arduino is doing Python. That's right. And you're probably well, saying... Well, they have for a bit, but now they're doing more Python. Well, first up, are those little feather boards? No. Do they look kind of like feathers? Yes. And is that Python? Yeah. So what's the destination with a lot of microcontroller efforts? It's scripting languages mm. on feather-shaped things. And I think this is a big deal because we were like, hey, Arduino, we're going this direction, we're going this direction. Um, not only from our form factor, but also going to a scripting language Python. So this is with Open uh, MV. Yeah, so this is this is interesting because and it's MicroPython, it, it and um, it's it's interesting because Arduino is kind of going similar to the route that they had with the Arduino IDE and Arduino hardware, where you know you don't have to use any particular IDE with with CircuitPython or MicroPython. You can use any any basically any IDE, although Thony is pretty popular because it has file management. Um, but you can you know it's it's a REPL and it's you know a file uploading system through the REPL. Um, and so the ID doesn't matter that much, but um, having a, an ID that's, that is controllable um, lets them have add-ons and other capabilities that they want to, to add. One of the things about the Arduino ID is it's not a very complicated ID, but it has a couple of little add-ons that make it suitable um, for use with Arduino boards. And so um, sort of similar to you know, Arduino hardware and Arduino ID, where they're, you know, they're two pieces of the same um, development tooling, um, they're, go they're going the same way with the MicroPython and Python on hardware support, um, specialized tooling, specialized IDE, even though it isn't required, I think they're kind of pushing people towards that. So, you know, it, we always said like, oh, well, are, do we know IDE ever support Python? And the answer is no, but what they did do is they're using OpenMV's IDE, which is a very a lovely IDE that you can use um, to do 
you know, open machine vision stuff, but it's also a fairly good MicroPython ID to, to begin with. And I, it, you know, I don't know if they're using the OpenMV fork of MicroPython or the core, um, but I think these are the NRF52840 boards and NRF52840 has good MicroPython support. It has BLE um, support. And of course in CircuitPython we have support as well. So in addition to the Portana now they're, they're and the RP2040, which of course has um, uh, first class MicroPython support. Now they're going back and saying, okay, here's earlier boards that yeah. we're going to bring in. So now I think they have maybe five boards total that are, are, are given uh, Python hardware native support. So it's, it's, you know, and, and going forward, the hardware coming forward, coming out from now on almost certainly will as well, because it's only going to get more powerful, more RAM, more capability. Yeah. So it's one of those things where it's like, interpretive languages are, are on microcontrollers. They're here to stay. And I think some people get caught up, like what's the differences between, start off with the project you want to do, and there might be an easier, better, faster way to do it, and what's the value of your time, um, and, and what things do you want to get done. Mm. And there's some programming languages that are just like more net, net native than others. Yeah. So anyways, I'm excited about this because I wrote the, why Arduino One Wire's here to stay a million years ago, I wrote this article on Make. And so far, um, Harry Seldon style, you know, foundation, like the, the whole big movement of things are, is still the same. Something might not be called Arduino in the future, but as you can tell, it's like, th things are moving towards a certain type of form factor and certain type of programming languages, and it's making things better and easier. And some people don't like it. I am a, like I'm it. a fan of the some thin board. Like some people don't like it. Yeah, that's some, peop some people want the, remember back in the day, I don't know, like a decade ago, uh, or less, when you would get a dev board, it was like $500, and it had like this lockdown IDE. You couldn't do anything with it. Everything was like complicated and hard and expensive. Yeah. Um, some people really like that way. We don't. I think that the, the market has spoken. This is what the market wants. Yeah. Okay. And that is our Python or Hardware News of the Week. Okay.